All right, everybody, I'm Logan Alec, I'm a CPA, and here I am with yet another tax return preparation software review. Today I'm reviewing a Jackson Hewitt. Where is Jackson Hewitt? Jackson Hewitt's over here. Um, you know, I've reviewed a lot of tax return preparation softwares this year already. You can see a playlist to all of them in the description below. TurboTax, h and Block, Tax Act, Tax Slayer, Credit Karma Tax, uh, free tax USA. Uh, you can see all my reviews down there. There's a link to the playlist with all of them in the description below. But today I'm reviewing a Jackson Hewitt uh, tax return filing service. Um, you can certainly go to jacksonhewitt.com and you'll see this. Or you can use my Jackson Hewitt affiliate link, which is go.moneydoneright.com slash Jackson dash Hewitt. Uh, that link is also in the description below. And you will see this page uh, with, that has a promo code on it that you can use to file your taxes for only uh, $20. Um, federal taxes for 20 bucks and unlimited states for an additional $20, right? So um, if you just go to jacksonhewitt.com, the cost to you, let's see, where is the cost? <sighs> da, 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 da. Right, it's $49. So, um, you know, you'll save nine bucks basically by, um, by using my link and then using promo code 20 T W E N T Y. So uh, let's get on the good foot here and just get right into it. Uh, I have actually never used Jackson Hewitt tax return preparation uh, before. So uh, this will, this is as new to me as it is to you, probably others of you, you, um, you've seen this before if you've used Jackson Hewitt before, but I have not, so. All right, so I want to send a confirmation email. Alrighty, there it is, 753174. I'm gonna select that, go back over to Jackson Hewitt, enter that code. All right, security questions. This is interesting. So it looks like Jackson Hewitt, like it, it has more like security uh, question, security kind of features like that than, um, the other tax return softwares that I've reviewed thus far. I don't remember any of the other ones asking for security questions. So um, these will obviously be uh, blurred out because uh, they are personal questions. And obviously I do not want uh, the general public to know. So, oh man, yeah, they're really taking their uh, privacy seriously here. I guess that's a good thing. Um, I'm going to skip the two-factor authentication because I'm doing a fake tax return in Jackson Hewitt uh, today. Um, so as you know, if you've seen my other tax return preparation videos, I prepared a fake W-2, a fake 1099 for interest um, for an individual named Jimmy Dean who works for a company called Big Company. So this is going to be a completely fake tax return. The things I input on this tax return are just for example purposes. In your tax return that you prepare, you'll be inputting your own information, okay? So just to make that crystal, crystal clear. The purpose of this walkthrough and review is simply to show you how it works. It's not to tell you what to input on your tax return, okay? Because everybody's tax return situation is different. So just to make that crystal, crystal clear. Um, all right, so let's begin. Next, how will you file? Okay, so uh, this is a pretty common question that tax return preparation software is asked right off the bat. Um, so I'm saying that Jimmy, uh, he um, is divorced and he has his daughter who lives with him. Uh, but I'm gonna say that, well, he knows he's not married, he knows he's not a widower, but he's not sure if he should file single or head a household. So I'm gonna click help me decide. Uh, was he married as of December 31st? Nope. Did your spouse die? Nope. Did you pay more than half the cost of keeping up the home of your parents who may claim as a dependent? Uh, no, I'm, I'm gonna say no. Did you pay more than half the cost of keeping up a home where you and one of the following lived with you for more than half the year? Your unmarried child, adopted child, grandchild, or stepchild who is under the age of 19. So yes, I'm saying that his daughter is, uh, I think I'm saying she's 10 years old or something like this. Um, all right, so I'm going to say yes to this question. Okay, and a household, great. Um, the layout here, it's pretty slick. It feels, uh, it feels professional. It feels pretty slick. Uh, can he be claimed as a dependent by somebody else? I'm going to say no. Were you married at any point in 2020? Saying no. Uh, what is your full name? So, like I said, completely fictitious individual. His name is Jimmy Dean. Next, your social security number. Um, 
this is a fake social security number. <laughs> Uh, seven 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 six six five five four four. Let's see if it takes it. When were you born? I'm saying that he was born January nineteen seventy six. January first on a Thursday. I was born on a Thursday as well. What is your phone number? So, do do they all require this? I think some tax return preparation softwares don't require this, but again, completely fake phone number here, mailing address. Okay, so I, I gave him this address in uh, Los Angeles. Okay, I like how it fills in the, uh, the city for you there. What state did you live in 2020? California. Are you a full-time student? No. Presidential election campaign fund? I'm gonna say no. Were you blind? No. Okay. Where do I input that promo code? 20, right? That's the question. I bet I bet it pops up when you're about to pay after you've prepared your returns. Um, so I don't know if I can show that to you because I'm obviously not going to pay, right, um, for this return because it's a completely fake return for a fictitious individual. Um, it's interesting they ask this right off the bat. I'm going to say yes, add your state return. Okay. Um, okay, so Jackson Hewitt seems to take the kind of hold your hand kind of approach to tax return preparation software, which I like. I mean, I think for many people that is uh, very appropriate. I think that there's kind of a spectrum of, you know, the ones that really hold your hand on one side of the spectrum and the ones that's kind of like, you know, you kind of got to figure it out yourself. Um, you know, TurboTax is, is pretty much a hand holding tax return preparation software. I might put H&R Block online right here. You know, Credit Karma Tax, which is free for all filing tax situations. I mean, it's a good software, but you kind of have to know what you're doing. Um, you know, I'd put more on the other end of the spectrum. This Jackson Hewitt, as of right now, it kind of feels like it's in between uh, TurboTax and H&R Block in terms of hand-holding. So more hand-holding than H&R Block, but not quite as much as TurboTax. Uh, do you have a W-2? Yes. Whose W-2 is this? Jimmy's. Employer information. So again, I have completely fictitious company that I made up called Big Company. 633 West 5th Street, uh, 90071. Should auto-populate the city and state? Yes, it did. Uh, is the address on your W-2 the same as your current mailing address? Yes. So Jackson, here what I'm finding, they're asking more like, they're asking more questions about things, but it's not, it's not a bad thing. I mean, they're not, it, it's not making it like, oh, this is taking forever. What I don't like is when tax return preparation softwares, they ask you like all the questions, right? But then they do it each one on each individual screen. I like how Jackson Hewitt is, it's making it like pretty seamless. Like it's not, it's not taking up a lot of time asking these questions. Um, okay, so enter the amount from your W-2. I like how this is pretty compact here. Uh, you know, these W-2 boxes. I mean, maybe if, um, uh, maybe for eyesight isn't as good. It might be challenging. I know the other tech return preparation softwares, they seem to have uh, larger um, tech on screen text. Uh, but for myself, you know, I can pretty easily see all this and it makes it just really compact for me as I input these um, as I input these numbers here. All right, so seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. We have nothing in those boxes for Jimmy. It's not to say that you won't. Like I said, you're going to input information from your W-2, right? All right, now we have the box 12 amounts. Okay, so box C. Okay, I do like... Okay, this is now this might be a little bit confusing for some people, right? Because the year... It doesn't say the year anywhere here. So this this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about Jackson Hewitt really wanting to like ask all the questions, right? Um, you know, for the vast majority of people, this will be 2020, the year we're filing the tax return. But some people might get tripped up on that because 2020 isn't in box 12 of the return. So I think that's kind of a slight ding on Jackson Hewitt uh, in terms of user experience. Um, but I'm going to input the amount. I do like how it tells you what the what the box is right? Um, I think they all do that, except Tax Slayer, I believe. I don't think Tax Slayer told you when you input the box 12 codes what they are. Anyway, all right, then we have D, which is the um, 401k contributions, 
And uh, that's the so this 13125 401k contributions is the difference between uh, the taxable wages on the 1040 and the Social Security wage base because this the 401k contributions reduces your taxable wages on your 1040 right it comes up pre-tax, but it doesn't reduce your Social Security wage base or your Medicare wage base. All right, then we have double D. Uh, this is the cost of uh, employer provided um, health insurance. All right, so 24199.76, okay. So then we're here on uh, box, th uh, box 13, retirement plan, yes, because he's covered by 401k at work. And then in box 14, it's CASDI. So let's see if it takes this. Because this is like kind of a, oftentimes it's state information that goes here. And obviously sometimes the way these things are presented on the W-2 is kind of in inconsistent, right? Because it's not, it's not standard like the box 12 um, codes, right? But let's see if H and R block or Jackson Hewitt can figure this out. Uh, W-2 is altered or handwritten, correct W-2, no. Special wage type, no, not a statutory employee. Um, I, you would kind of know if, if any of those apply to you. All right, state and local amounts, just down here, box 15. I'm gonna input all this. California, state ID number, this is the you know, corporation number or uh, secretary of state number, if it's an LLC, uh, state wages, tips, etc. 83867.54, state income tax withheld, 4848.62. All right, and there's no local wages or local income tax. So, uh, what's going on here? Is this like a review screen? Okay, so it doesn't like the fake EIN I used. You obviously won't have this issue because you're gonna be using an actual company's EIN when you input your W-2. So let's see if it takes two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, it's not. Uh, that was just a, a random assortment of numbers. Okay, so it took that. Uh, do you have another W-2 to add? Obviously, if you do, you will say yes. Uh, Jimmy does not, however, so I'm going to say no. So we're done with his W-2. Okay, now it says your income. We've covered your W-2s. For other income, choose the type you like to work on below, or we'll guide you through all other income sections. So I like this. It gives you an option. Uh, to either hold your hand, right, just to make sure you don't miss any other items of income, um, or you can kind of go through this list here, right, and pick out the, um, the items of income that you personally have. So just for the sake of completion, I'm gonna say guide me through all sections, just to make sure, you know, just to make sure you don't miss anything. Uh, do you have interest income? This may have been reported to you on a form 1099 interest. So I did uh, create a fake 1099 interest for Jimmy. Here it is, 1099 interest with $100 of interest income. So I'm gonna say yes. All right, tell us about your 1099 interest. Let's say next. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say now he just, he just lived in California the whole time. Tell us the name of the business or individual who paid you interest. So it's Big Bank. Next, do you know the payer's tax identification number? Um, yes, we yes we do. Again, this is fake. So one thing about Jackson Hewitt I didn't see is um, no ability to import your um, you know your W two into uh, into Jackson Hewitt. I think TurboTax has that. Was the pair tax identification number you entered a social security number? No, it's an EIN for a bank. Some 10 interest have an account number. Does yours? I don't think I, yeah, I did give one to him. Okay. I mean, this is not like a necessary entry. In fact, I don't think the other tax return prep software has even asked that question. Uh, you know, the pair's routing transit number. No. All right. Interest income. Hundred dollars. That obviously, if you have other items in these boxes, you put that in. But if not, just hit next. He doesn't have anything else on the ten I interest. So, uh, is any of your interest income from Illinois, Iowa, Maine, Massachusetts, Oklahoma, or Tennessee? I'm going to say no. 
seller finance mortgage. No, this is not. This is just interest from a bank. Advanced options. Wow, yeah, they really want to like cover all the bases here. None of these apply to Jimmy's situation. All right, so we got the interest in. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't like the fake EIN again. Okay, maybe we'll take that fake EIN. All right, so do you have more interest income to add? I'm gonna say no. Let's continue. I'm gonna say so. Do you have dividend income? Andrew's question is yes. I created like a. Uh, well, actually, this is a real. Uh, 1099 package from a um, from a brokerage uh, that I had like a very small amount of money in. So it's from 2019, but the form hasn't really changed to 2020. So I'm just going to use this. Um, so do you have dividend, dividend income? I'm going to say yes. Tell us about your 1099 dividend. All right. What state returns as dividend income belong? Let's see, this is another question that might be kind of confusing to some people. Because he lives in California, it's all gonna be on his California return. But, so what if you, okay, so you have to choose a so, and I wish that was explained a little bit better. The other tax return preparation softwares don't ask that question, so. Um, what is the name of the business that paid you your dividends? Okay, so that's right here where it says payer's name, Apex Clearing. Do you know the payer's tax identification number? Yes, here it is, that's right here on the 1099. One three two nine six seven four five three. Uh, even though the, was the number entered a social security number? No. This is probably the most thorough tax return preparation software, I must say. I mean, they're asking like all the questions, right, about a particular item. Even though for the vast majority of taxpayers, like, who's getting dividends from a person with a social security number, right? I, like, I've never even seen that in practice, but. I guess they just want to make sure all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed, kind of cover their butts. Uh, do you know the address of the business that paid your dividend? So yes, I, it's it's right here, one Dallas Center, three fifty North St. Paul, Dallas, Texas. I'm going to input that. It only takes one line, so I'm just going to say three fifty North, North St. Paul, Suite thirteen hundred, two hundred one Dallas. Uh, some form of dividend have an account number. Does yours? I'm going to say yes. Again, this is another one of those. Well, actually, I'm going to say no because I, I blanked out the account number. All right, so now we actually just input the information for the 1099 dividend. It's all right here. Ordinary dividends, $2.57. Qualified dividends, $1.89. By the way, it, I mean, and it's going to round, right? Up. Oh, yep, it says that because you don't put cents on a tax return. It's just all round numbers. By the way, if you uh, haven't yet seen my video on... Um, how dividends are taxed, right? Like ordinary dividend, what's ordinary dividend, what's qualified dividend. Uh, check it out, short video, link at the top of the screen. All right, so uh, then this is gonna round to zero. These are gonna round to zero, but I'm gonna input them anyway. So the section 199 A dividend, 11 cents. Yeah, just, I don't even know why I'm doing this. <laughs> uh, foreign tax paid, I mean, it's various here. Exempt interest dividends, 36 cents. It's, that will likely round down to zero as well. Yep, okay. All right, there's no state withholding on a 10 dividend. Is this income from Iowa, Illinois, or do you need to enter a limited liability company number? No. All right, these advanced options are not applicable to Jimmy's situation. All right. Okay. Do you have another 10 dividend to include on your turn? Nope, let's continue. If you do have another 10 dividend, you'd obviously say yes, but I'm saying Jimmy does not. All right, investments. Did you sell any stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or other investments? I'm going to say yes. Okay. <laughs> I like how it, it, it gives a little compliment here. You're a mover and shaker. All right, tell us about your stock sales. Okay. Okay, so did you re did he receive a 1099B? So yes. So if you look in this, pa this package, right, that I got from this brokerage, you can see right here it says Form 1099B Total Summary. Okay. Um, you can say, I received a Form 1099B and the basis was reported to the IRS. I received a 1099B, but the basis was not reported to the IRS. So what the heck does that mean? So in Jimmy's case, all the basis for all the stock transactions was reported to the IRS, right? The basis is what he paid for the stock, right? And his capital gain is the difference between his basis 
and his proceeds, what he sold the stock for, right? That's pretty intuitive, right? Your gain is the difference between what, you know, what you sold the stock for and what you paid for it, right? What you paid for is called the basis in tax speak. Um, and if you look at this summary here, because this summary is basically summarizing all the transactions, the specific transactions on the following pages. I just used the summary. So if you look at the summary here, you can see the only, the only numbers are on lines where it says basis reported to IRS, okay? Same with the long term, right? Basis reported to IRS. There's nothing on the lines that say basis not reported to IRS. See, those are all zero. So, uh, so I'm going to say I received a form 1090B and the basis was reported to the IRS. Okay, so uh, I'm just what I like to do with this. Like I said, I like to use this summary here. So what I'll usually do is I'll just say, okay, this is the wealth a wealth simple account. Uh, you know, this is wealth simple box A, right? Well, simple box A. And these are short term, right? Gains or losses. So I'm just, I'm just going to put like, you know, I got it on you know, January 1st, 2020. And I sold it like, you know, in, I don't know, December 31st, 2020, right? So that's all short term, right? You didn't hold it for longer than a year. Um, you bought and sold it in the same year. You didn't, you didn't hold it for longer than a year. So, all right. So I'm going to say the proceeds of this is 128.43, which is right there on the 1099B. Cost or other basis, 126.87. And there's, there's no other amounts to input here. The realized gain is simply the difference between these two numbers, right? Which Jackson Hewitt will calculate. Okay, so it should be able to recognize that it's short term from the dates, but I'll put that in anyway. Okay, so none of the other tax softwares ask you to input state information. Like California taxes worldwide income, as do many states, so. Um, okay, this is a little, a little annoying. Like, he, they know he's a resident of California, so they really shouldn't have to ask that. All right, so now we're gonna now we have to input the long term gains or losses, right? So I, I'm gonna say I need to add form 1099B and from uh, now what did I just do? I don't think this is okay. So this is this is the one we just did. Okay, so I'm gonna say yes. I have another transaction, right? Next. So again, right, we're doing the long term now. The basis was reported to the IRS again. So I'm going to say I received a Form 1099B and the basis was reported to the IRS. And I'm just going to call it Wealth Simple Box D. And the date acquired, I'm going to say was, and I'm just making this up, of course, but I'm going to say this was bought in 2019, you know, and it was sold in, you know, I don't know, December. 2020 right so that's obviously longer than a year right um so that'll be long term okay proceeds 163.89 cost or other basis 154.20 and there's not there's nothing else to, to put on there's something else there I'm going to say next, and again, it's asking kind of these state questions. Now I don't need to make an adjustment. California. Okay. Hit save. All right, so these are all the stock transactions. I'm, I'm assuming this is the only 1099B that Jimmy received, so this is it. So I'm going to say no, let's continue. Are you carrying over a capital loss from prior year? So this is... You know, generally when you when you sell stocks at a loss or some other capital asset at a loss, um, you know, that loss is first applied against other capital gains you had during the year. But if your capital losses exceed your capital gains during the year, you can deduct up to $3,000 of that excess capital loss against your ordinary income on your tax return. If, you know, that excess is greater than $3,000, right? Okay, you deduct the $3,000 in the current year, uh, but then you carry forward that capital loss into future years. I'm going to assume that Jimmy doesn't have that. Did you sell your home in 2020? I'm going to say no. Did you own a small business in 2020? I'm going to say no. I mean, obviously, if you did, you would answer this question. But because I just, you know, these reviews I do on YouTube, they're just simple tax returns. Um, 
you know, I'm not going to get into all that. So I'm going to say no retirement income. He's not taking you know pension or anything right now. RRB no 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 lottery or gambling winnings. No 1099 miscellaneous. No 1099 NEC. Oh yeah. So I'm going to do unemployment compensation to see if it Jackson Hewitt is updated for the $10,200 exclusion. Again, completely fake, just random numbers. I just tapped on my keyboard. <laughs> and I'm going to say one, two, three, fake street, fake town, California. Is the recipient name on your form 1099G the same? I'm going to say yes. I didn't prepare fake 1099G, but you would actually look at your 1099G. All right, I'm, I'm going to say you got $10,000 of unemployment compensation in 2020. It's not a corrected form, not provided by railroad. Not a corrected form. I'm going to say not a no account number. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. I think it wanted me to answer the question if it was required to repay it. No. Okay. So it didn't change the tax due amount. Why does he have a tax due? Oh, hmm. I guess I suppose it's because we haven't gotten to this, the recovery rebate question yet. All right. Um, do you have an R10G? No. Let's continue. Do you have a taxable state? Nope. I'm going to say nope. Obviously, if these questions apply to you, you would say yes, but I am assuming no because I can do that because I made this person up. No. No. Wow, they ask all the questions. All right. So let us review. The income. So these are all the incomes. Finished with income. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, this shows a tax due because it probably hasn't even. Yeah, we haven't even told him about the daughter yet, right? That's interesting. Like, I think the other tax return preparation software is they ask about the de dependents earlier on. I mean, we told Jackson Hewitt that he had a dependent for the head of household question, um, but I guess it, that. We didn't actually talk about the, who the dependent is, if it's a child, right? So, um, so I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say the uh, daughter's name is Molly. Uh, again, fake. Daughter. I'm going to say she was born in January of I don't know, 2010, January 1st. Did this dependent live with you all year during 2020? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say no. Okay, earned income credit. Could another person qualify to claim this dependent? I'm gonna say no. I I think he's uh he's phased out of the earned income credit based on income though. So it's interesting they're asking this. Are either of these statements true? The dependent is unmarried. Yes, the dependent is unmarried. They are citizen of the United States. Yes, they lived more than half the year. Okay. <sighs> I don't know what they want. Zero four seven zero eight. Uh, I'm not good at creating fake tax ID numbers. I guess. Do you have other any other dependents to add? I'm going to say no. All right, now it's got the child tax credit in there, right? Okay, your deductions and credits. Okay, I'm going to say guide me through all sections. Did you own a home in 2020? I'm going to say no. Depending on your taxes you wish to deduct, I'm going to say no. Uh, did you donate clothes, household goods, or any other non-cash items? I'm going to say no, but I'm going to say he did make cash donations for a thousand dollars, and it should limit that to three hundred dollars because he's not itemizing deductions. I'm going to say no, no non-cash donation. It, it already asked if I made any non-cash donations, right? But it it asked it again, so it's kind of repetitive. Okay, does the thirty percent limitation apply to any of your donations? So. Again, it's like, how's a taxpayer supposed to know? I mean, the answer is no in his case, but I guess it explains it. Um, okay, so it's it's it right. It's like to, it's typically fifty percent, right? To the things that people usually, oftentimes, donate to um, churches, educational organizations, hospitals, etc. Um, but then you know, 
If you're donating to a veterans organization, fraternal society, nonprofit cemetery, and certain private non-operating foundations, you're limited to 30% of your AGI. Okay, your desk gross income. Most people don't have to worry about these limits because most people do not give away 30% or 50% of their AGI to charity, right? This usually only comes into play with very wealthy people, right? Um, maybe they, you know, they built a lot of wealth and they no longer, you know, are maybe working. They don't longer maybe have a high income, but, but they want to give a lot away. So this, that's when this limitation plays in for how much they can deduct of those charitable donations. And there's some planning we have to do for that. Um, but for your average person like, like Jimmy here, um, uh, this says this doesn't apply. Okay. Do you, do you have to drive or to do any volunteer work? You're going to say no. Great. Well, add this to your tax return. Great. All right. So I'm going to say no. I'm done with the donations. So Jimmy was never limited by his AGI for charitable contributions. Uh, no education for his child. She's not, you know, in college. She just goes to public school. No traditional to IRA Roth conversion. I'm going to say no. He didn't contribute to a traditional. Do you contribute to a retirement plan at work? Yes, it should know that because we the retirement plan box was checked on the W-2 and we inputted the code for 401k contributions. So I feel like Jackson Hewitt, sometimes it does ask questions that it should know. I kind of wish it would update its algorithm for that. But I mean, overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, there are just some little things, right, that aren't quite as smooth as I'd like them to be. Are all the following true with the person who made the contribution is not yet. Yeah, so Jimmy made the contribution and he is not claimed as a dependent. He was not a student and he was born before uh, January 1st, 2003. So all those are true. Okay, retirement savings. So I'm saying that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to say that I didn't do a special character. What? All right. So I'm going to say that he made a $6,000 Roth IRA contribution. All right. Let's continue. Are you an education professional paid for education? I'm going to say no. Do you have any other following expenses? Job related business expenses to qualify. Yeah. So, you know, it used to be on your tax return, like everybody or almost everybody could deduct as a miscellaneous itemized deduction. Well, Jamie doesn't even itemize his deduction. So this doesn't matter. But for those who itemize their deductions, uh, used to be able to deduct, um, you know, a portion of um, your job related expenses that were unreimbursed. Tax Cuts and Jobs Act passed in 2017 um, got rid of that. Right now, it's only particular, very specific occupations such as qualified performing artists, armed forces reservists, uh, a fee basis, or local government official. Right, so, so I'm gonna say no, because he is a sausage maker. Doesn't have any of that. Uh, did you get an IRS letter saying you cannot claim the earned income credit? I'm gonna say no. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to assume that, well, he's already phased out for 2020 based on his 2020 income. So even here in more than 2019, I don't see how that would help him. But I'm going to say yes anyway, and just to see what it does. Like, I think this is completely unnecessary. Okay, so I'm going to say his uh, 2019 earned account, let's say it was $90,000. You should answer no to this question if you didn't have an amount. No, it was not earned combat pay. Okay. Okay, let's move forward. Um, I will say this. I, I think I've said this previously, but this is, seems to be the most thorough tax return preparation software. They really ask all the questions and make sure everything is answered. Okay, so you told us about your deductions and credits. You can revisit any section below or we'll guide you through all. Now, what about the recovery rebate credit? I don't like, I, I'm sure they're going to do that later, but I don't like how they're not t doing that now. Because if you watch my other tax return, well, the recent one since the um, the second stimulus was passed, if you've seen my other tax return preparation software videos, you know that I like to assume that Jimmy got, you know, a, um, a stimulus for himself, $1,200 stimulus, first stimulus for himself, and he got a $600 stimulus for himself, the second stimulus. But I like to assume that he didn't get one for his daughter. He didn't get 500 for his daughter, didn't get 600 for his daughter. 500 for stimulus, 600 second stimulus. I, I like to assume the IRS missed that because I know a lot of people, the IRS missed that for their dependent um, children. So, all right, healthcare. 
No, I'm just saying I got health insurance through work. Did I just answer this? No. Okay, I'm finished. Um, other tax situations. No estimated tax payments. Did you apply any of your federal? No. No estimated payments necessary. Uh, no interest in or authority or foreign account or trust. No virtual currency. No payment on first time home buyer's credit. Didn't did I already answer answer this question? I'm gonna say no. Hmm. Now they're just being silly. I know I already answered that question. Okay, now they're asking about stimulus, right? It's important that everyone eligible for the economic impact payment, also known as a stimulus payment, receive the correct amount. Okay. All right, so now they're getting to stimulus. Okay, so recovery rebate credit. First economic stimulus payment. I'm saying he only got 1200 $1, right? So he didn't get the 500 for his daughter first time around. And I'm saying he only got the $600 stimulus the second time around, so he didn't get one for his daughter. So, no. So, no. no. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I wish it would tell you that, yeah, you're getting an $1,100 recovery rebate credit, but it chose not to. Uh, yeah, so I do want to look at the forms. I want to look at the tax return. Just to kind of review it. No, I want to look at the tax return. Free return preview, okay. Sure. Okay, downloaded it. I gotta go find it. All right, here we go. Um, tax return summary. Okay, just I want to. I don't like the big water mark on it, but what can you do, right? Okay, so this all looks right. That's his wages. That's the interest he earned. That's the dividends. That's the capital gains or losses. That all looks correct. Uh, it's taking the three hundred dollar charitable deduction for non-itemizers. That looks correct. $18,650 standard deduction for head of household. It's interesting that it didn't make a super big deal about, uh, it seemed like the other tax return preparation softwares, they really try to like, you know, they spend a lot of time on itemized versus standard deduction. But I like how Jackson Hewitt just asked, oh, did you own a home? No. Did you pay any, you know, other state income taxes and you're withholding? No. So he kind of just knew that he wouldn't, he would just take the standard deduction. So um taxable income right which is agi less your standard or itemized deductions is your taxable income this is the tax on that income right there's a little capital gain and qualified dividend worksheet in there too because he had qualified dividends as well as long-term capital gains two thousand dollar child tax credit that looks correct this is the amount he had withheld on his w-2 federal income tax withholding and yep there's the eleven hundred dollar recovery rebate credit right there so one thousand six hundred fifty two dollar refund Okay, that looks fine to me. Yep, and it put his unemployment there and backed it out there, so that looks right to me. And here's the capital gains and losses we input from the 1099B. Okay, so um, he's not eligible for this credit for qualified retirement savings contributions because he's phased out based on income, right? He makes more than this amount. So, but they still include this form because I guess they're just super thorough like that. Other tax return preparation softwares, it did not prepare that form because it's not eligible for it. Um, okay. Okay, so it's showing you all the worksheets here. The other tax return preparation softwares, sometimes they just show you like page one, page two, the schedule one, and maybe the schedule D. But, you know, I kind of just as an accountant, I like how. Jackson Hewitt is showing all the forms. Okay, now we're on to California. I, have, I haven't done the state return yet in um, here. So uh, let's move on to the state. As with other tax return preparation software reviews, I tend to just gloss over it, go real quickly through the state because I know state's not applicable to most people here. Um, you know, because most people don't live in, in California. Uh, do you have a qualifying dependent? Yes. So I'm just going to zip right through these head of household questions. 
I wish that these tax return preparation softwares would just pull the head of household questions for the state from the federal, right? Because you answer a lot of these same questions for the federal, right? Did not provide more than half the support. Is not filing a joint return. All right. Okay. Well, this is taking a little while. Coverage information, okay. Every person had health insurance, uh, not purchased through the marketplace. Do you have any dependents that required to file a tax return? I'm gonna say no. Do not, do you in, did you include income for all household members? Yes. Wow, they're super thorough, aren't they? Takes them a little while with the state return, doesn't it? I wish they would just tell you all these things at once instead of, okay, I don't, I'm gonna say I don't own a use tax. Use taxes basically if you make a purchase, usually from out of state and you don't pay sales tax on it. And you have to pay use tax. But I, th you know, this was a bigger deal, right? When like, oh, Amazon didn't charge like, you know, sales tax in some states. But now it's like the whole e-commerce thing, you know, it's, it's pretty, I'm not saying, it's like a pretty mature industry now and all those tax situations happen. Okay, here we go again. What do I, what does it want to be here? Uh, I guess it wants that. Okay. You, I could review the state return as well, but I'm not going to. I, I don't, okay, well, it doesn't have my payment information yet, so. Okay. I'm obviously not gonna file for reels. Okay, here's an upsell. You know, I like how Jackson Hewitt, they, they put this upsell here at the end, but at least I don't hit you up with a lot of upsells at the beginning, right? How do I feel about this upsell? I'm not the most thrilled about it because someone with this simple tax situation doesn't need audit assistance, right? So that's kind of just a scare tactic. Um, mm, complete restoration services in the event of identity theft incident provide six month of daily credit monitoring. I feel that you can get a lot of this for free with like a good credit card, right? So I'm gonna say no. Okay. All right. Well, I'm obviously not gonna file this tax return. Okay, here's where you put in the promo code, yay. Yep, so you save nine bucks, okay. Um, I'm, I'm gonna stop here because uh, next page is the payment screen. I'm obviously not gonna pay for this fake tax return. So um, Jackson Hewitt, it, it honestly, it impressed me. Um, I think the pros, this could be a pro and a con, but uh, one of the pros is that it is very thorough. Like it asks all the questions to make sure you've thought through everything. Um, Another pro is that the interface is uh, is pretty sleek. You know, I don't I don't think it's it's overwhelming at all. Um, this is I like how kind of straightforward this is. Um, another pro is that it 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 does really hold your hand through the tax return preparation process, but it also gives you the options to you know okay yeah guide me through this or I want to do it myself right. Sometimes I feel maybe with TurboTax. If you know what your tax return is supposed to look like, it can be a little frustrating because you have to answer all the questions sequentially, right? 
but with Jackson Hewitt, I, I, I feel that kind of gives you that choice, which is cool. Um, so, and then finally, yeah, it got the job done. It was, it's, it's accurate, solid tax, updated, solid tax return preparation software. Now let's talk about the cons. Con number one, um, you know, because it, it is so thorough, I feel like sometimes it asks questions of the user that the everyday, you know, everyday Joe or Jane taxpayer won't know the answer to, right? Are your, you know, are any of the donations to charitable organizations you made subject to the 30% of adjusted gross income limitation, right? It does have a little box, a button you can press and say, hey, explain this to me. What does this mean? But I know some people will read that and feel even more confused. Sometimes I think that with these tax return preparation software, sometimes less is more, right? Especially for those with a very simple tax situation. Um, another con is with that state return, it kind of took a long time to kind of load and to calculate. Um, even using, you know, professional tax return preparation software, as I did, uh, you know, uh, working for a large CPA firm, um, uh, th that's not uncommon for the, you know, the federal return to be quick, calculate that quickly, but the state returns, you know, to spend a little less time, a little less resources as a software on that. So it's going to take a little longer to calculate. Another con is that I found that Jackson Hewitt tended to repeat questions a lot, questions that I've already answered. Um, like, you know, it asked those questions, hey, do you own an interest, you know, in a foreign bank account? Did you sell any virtual currency? Stuff like that. I had to answer those questions twice, which is a little annoying, right? I, I feel that it should know that if you answered it once, you should have to answer the question again. Um, another con, and, you know, maybe this is, a, not a huge con because it did get to this, but I feel that when it was going over the credits, it kind of gave me pause that it didn't put the recovery rebate credit, right? Which is for stimulus payments not received in that list of credits. It kind of did that at the end. So I was kind of questioning, well, is, did it miss this credit? Because that, that's a credit, right? So um, I think I would have preferred to have seen that earlier in the credit section at least rather than saving it to the end, right? Because it kind of makes me think, oh, did I not input that somewhere in the credit section? Well, no, I mean, I didn't put everything correctly. It's just Jackson Hewitt chose to put that credit later in the tax return preparation process rather than with all the other credits. So Jackson Hewitt, it is a solid tax return preparation software. One thing I didn't really talk about is the pricing, huh? Um, okay, so basically you can get uh, right now, right, with my code, which I, I believe is good through April 15th, um, federal and state unlimited tax situations for 40 bucks. So kind of the standards I look at here are if you want to pay for tax return preparation software, TurboTax is kind of a gold standard, right? If you don't want to pay, then Credit Karma Tax, you know, is, is a good option because it's it's free for every tax situation, um, right? So I, I will say that I believe Jackson Hewitt is a, is a little bit more slick and in many respects a lot more kind of slick and professional and easy to use than Credit Karma Tax, where you really kind of have to know exactly what to input. Um, but it's not quite as slick as, you know, uh, TurboTax. But here's the thing. This tax return would be free in TurboTax and HR Block, federal and state, okay? Um, so for that reason, I don't think I can recommend Jackson Hewitt for simple tax returns, right? Why pay 40 bucks when you can do this tax return for free in TurboTax or h and Block or even Credit Karma Tax for that matter, right? Um, but for I didn't do a more advanced return here, like business and rental property and all that. Uh, but if I did, you know, 40 bucks and it seems like it's a, a decent product, you know, that's going to be cheaper, obviously, than... Um, TurboTax or H&R Block Online. Yeah, so I'm just looking at, you know, for the Premier, right, which you would need to use for TurboTax to input. Um, actually, I take that back. This return would not be free in TurboTax and H&R Block because he had stocks, right? So uh, for this return, just because he had those stocks, he'd actually have to pay 140 bucks in TurboTax uh, or, yeah, what is that? 70 plus 45, $115 in H&R Block, right? Um, you know, but frankly, I would probably just do this returning credit karma tax, to be completely honest, um, if you kind of know what you're doing. 
if you need the kind of hand holding, yeah, Jackson Hewitt's nice, but I don't know if you need to pay forty bucks for that hand holding for such a straightforward return. If you do want a bit of hand holding, I guess maybe 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 free tax USA. You know, or possibly Tax Act. I'd have to look at the pricing on Tax Act. Now, I think Tax Act is going to be expensive too because you have the stock sale. So, probably for this one, I would probably do this one in Free Tax USA. Yeah. You will have to pay, I think, for the state, right? What is the state right now? What would you have to pay? Yeah. So, the state's 15 bucks, right? So, I would probably do this one in Free Tax USA if you want some hand holding. If you kind of know what you're doing, Credit Karma Tax, do the whole thing for free, right? So. Um, I kind of wish I would have hit up the pricing earlier on in uh, in the video instead of here at the end, but uh, you know what? That's okay. I know you'll forgive me for that. Thank you so much for watching this Jackson Hewitt tax return preparation uh, software review for tax year 2020 for tax returns due in 2021. Um, on the next screen, you will see a list of other tax return preparation videos uh, that I have done this year. So um, if you're not sure what tax return preparation software you should use, be sure to check those out. Also check out the links in the description below uh, for my links to tax return preparation software, as well as a link to the playlist of all my tax return preparation software videos this year.